Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome to Indie Comics Review. I'm your host, Lorenzo, and uh, I'm going to be doing reviews on three of my favorite books from the past couple of weeks. Two from last week and one from a few weeks ago. Um, I think I'm going to stick with the three per episode thing for reviewing the comics. It makes a lot more sense, and uh, I think I kind of like it. So, that being said, let's get started. Uh, the first book is going to be Abbott 1973. Uh, that came out last week, and it is written by um, Saladin Ahmed and uh, Sami Kabila. And this is about a woman uh, named uh, Elena Abbott, and she's a journalist in Detroit in 1973 uh, for a, a black uh, newspaper in, in Detroit. Um, and it's, it's just the second series that she's been in. That she's had another series in uh, 2018. It's called Abbott. I think there was a five issue limited series also. And that um, that really kind of set the stage for for her background and everything. Uh, she had her husband murdered by this group um, of, of this evil um, um, black magic group in in, in, uh, in Detroit uh, called the Umbra. Um, she defeated them back in, in that series, and they're reassembling now as we open up the series uh, in Abbott 1973. As we open up uh, the series, uh, they're, the Umber is meeting, the head of the Umber is meeting at uh, the Art Center in Detroit, and is discussing Alina and her evolving uh, powers, and they're thinking that she's going to be a threat to them. But right now, she's not quite as much of a threat, but uh, she, because she's still just learning of, of her abilities. Uh, apparently, she has the power of, called the Lightbringer, or she has the power of the Lightbringer, uh, the only force that can actually um, put an end to this, uh, this umber threat in the city. So after that, we open on that scene, as they discuss what they're going to do about her, we see Elena and her current girlfriend, um, uh, and walking her dog in, uh, in, in, in one of the city parks. And so they, they're they kind of talking and having a good time and everything. Uh, then her girlfriend mentions something about uh, their relationship and Alina kind of shushes her because it is 1973 and uh, two, two openly gay women uh, back in that time, it, it was just uh, it was just kind of a thing back then. So uh, we kind of get that picture of their relationship um, and they also uh, mentioned that she's getting a new editor at a newspaper uh, this editor is uh, everyone's kind of upset about like you know this guy's gonna come in and try to fix stuff that's not broken uh, and it turns out he looks like he's kind of a male chauvinist pig so there's gonna be some issues as far as that goes in the in the, in the near future and she's investigating uh, among other things uh, there's uh, some racist group who's distributing uh, uh, hateful material about African Americans uh, to to white residents, trying to stir up some animosity. Uh, she's working on that case, trying to uh, figure out who's behind that. Uh, she's going to. There's no internet back in those days, so she had to do a lot of legwork and and go through archives and that kind of thing. She's um, she's seeking out sources to help her uh, research that. And also, what's happening is uh, she's covering the the mayoral race, uh, the mayoral race. Uh, this is the time uh, that Detroit was about to get his first black mayor in history. So there's a lot of stuff going on that she's investigating. And there's an event that happens at the end of this issue that uh, leaves the cliff, leaves the cliffhanger. Um, I'm not going to go into that, but my overall impression of, of uh, Abbott 1973 is that this, uh, you know, this is so much history. At least they, they give me kind of a, uh, a synopsis at the beginning of the book. So I get to jump on, unlike um, last week's cereal, it's kind of like, you know, you know figure it out, man. So, you know, hey, and my loyal readers already know what's happening. But in this case, I was thankfully given a, a, synops a synopsis of, uh, of what has happened to Elena in the past. So that gives me a little bit more of a background and uh, it buys me some time with the series. So I'll definitely pick this up for issue two. Um, I, I picked up a Jenny Friesen uh, cover, uh, B cover, which is, very cool. Uh, that that's pretty nice. And this, this series kind of reminds me of uh, some of you guys remember Friday Foster, 
there was a, 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 a comic strip, a weekly, or actually a daily comic strip uh, in the newspapers. And then uh, so the movies like Sheba Baby and uh, TV shows like Get Christy Love. Uh, so it's, it's kind of in that vein. Um, a little more serious, I think, with, with the supernatural element of it. But uh, it apparently has been optioned, like so many boom properties have. So that's uh, spurring a lot of interest in this book. But uh, it's not that that's so much that I've got my interest, you know, that's kind of cool. But it looks like this could be a good, a good series as well. So uh, I do recommend uh, 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 Abbott 1973. Uh, you guys should pick that up uh, while you can. It's uh, still available out there for cover price. You can pick it up a lot of places. So book number two is I Breathe the Body. This is by Zach Thompson and Andy McDonald. Uh, this is from Aftershock uh, Comics. Uh, I Breathe the Body, Ooh, wow, it, it, it opens right with a, a, a big like scene where the this guy is just he's doing some weird thing to his child it looks like there's a, a naked man in the middle of the floor and uh, there's some cloaked figure uh, seated and they're injecting themselves and what looks like they're injecting the child with some kind of substance as well so and strange things happen I won't reveal all of that and we flash forward to uh, the present day. Uh, what the present day for them is actually um, in the future. Like in, um, in the 2030s, or one of the late 2030s, the late early 2040s, I forget the exact, exact year, but it's the future. And uh, things become much more automated. Uh, the young man's name of uh, the baby in the beginning of the book that was uh, who the father was standing over with the cloaked figure and all that, his name was Milo. So if you flash forward, we see Milo um, in the present day, in their present day, and Milo become this huge influencer. And his father is the head of a giant media corporation. And they, they do, it's kind of like a combination of Facebook, MySpace, YouTube, all in one. And Milo just is just their biggest star. He's their biggest promoter, uh, their biggest influencer. And it, it, as, as it opens, he's making this like apology, not apology, for, for doing something stupid. He's, he's, a, he's an internet prankster. He, he's known for, for doing pranks and, and stuff like that. Uh, he's doing this non-apology for something he did that, that apparently caused a woman's death. Um, and you know, he just, he's, he's just such a little shit. You know, he's just like this, you know, this, this, this just, just, just self-obsessed uh, hero of, of all people who love people like him. Um, and, uh, and there's this woman named Ann who works, uh, I guess, PR for, for uh, Milo's dad's company. And she's figuring a way to spin this whole catastrophe. And, and all they do is like just mitigate uh, all the stupid things that he does and all the, all the bad stuff that he says. And they, they weigh one thing against the other and say, well, we can just lean into this, this, this non-apology apology and this and people are going to be, be polarized, but we can capitalize off that and sell merchandise. And it's just, it's just, you know, just as despicable as you might think it might be uh, down the road that we're heading right now with, with some of that stuff. Uh, and and Milo's, Milo is just uh, this. He's, he's a kid. I guess he's like about maybe he's a, a teen of 14, 15 years old, or he's a teenager, or a young teenager. So and turns out is invited to Anne and Anne and one of um, her co-workers is invited to um, a dinner uh, they were, they were, they been, been, been invited to dinner with uh, with Milo's dad uh, Milo's dad got some secrets obviously you know as we glean from him standing or naked in a room with a cloaked figure uh, to do with Milo's creation and this is what this is going to this story is going to be about um, uh, we think uh, and and thinks that she's gonna okay she's finally gonna get equity in the company and she's been working her tail off for for Milo and for Milo's father and she thinks okay he called me in for dinner tonight at his mansion at the estate they call it and so they meet up there and she's thinking like okay this this is the this is the big time I'm finally gonna uh, the boss is gonna make me make me whole for all the stuff I've been doing for him and it turns out that's not what the case is. Uh, he invites, uh, along with my, along with uh, Anne and her co-worker, 
Milo shows up late and just uh, starts going live right at the table. And, uh, and him and the father just don't get along that well. Uh, that's something to do with the incident that occurred uh, in the beginning of the book. Uh, so Milo just, Milo just tells everybody to, you know, to, to get the hell out of his face and he just takes off and starts doing live streaming. So, oh, and I forgot to mention, and now in, 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 this, in this future world where, where Milo is a, a huge influencer, telephones or phones can, can actually fly now. So you can, uh, anybody can go live and not need a selfie stick or anything like that because the phone just focuses on you and like, it's like these, these holographic butterfly wings that uh, keep the phone afloat, keep the phone uh, in midair while, uh, while you're going live and you're, you're streaming. So that, that's a, kind of a cool thing, I guess, but you know, uh, that would be something else to make us more addicted to, uh, to our phones. But uh, yeah, that, that's kind of a cool aspect of uh, the story as well. So the old man, uh, and trying to, he, the, the, old, the old man has also mastered some way of, uh, of making synthetic meat or growing meat uh, somehow. I think there's a, a technique for that now. So I guess in the future that, that technique has been like perfected. Uh, he grows meat in his basement. He prepared the steaks uh, that they were having um, for dinner in his basement. And it's, it's this weird like non-meat meat. So, so as Milo runs off uh, from dinner and leaves his non-meat meat at the table, uh, Dad sends uh, Ann and the uh, old boy after him. It's like, hey, go, go, go take care of that. Go, uh, go, go mitigate the problem here. Uh, so as they're like discussing their, their issues, um, they discover Milo has done something crazy yet again. Go figure. And, and the book ends uh, with the cliffhanger with them trying to figure out how to mitigate this thing that Milo has done, and uh, this is this is quite an, uh, an interesting story. I, I breathed a body. Um, it, it's, it, it gives you the impression that Milo is somehow not human, um, and his father somehow has is, is, is either created him or made some sort of pact that uh, and some some un uh, some unworldly pact. Uh, for his all of his fortune and for Milo's fame, um, I can see this uh, being a good ongoing series as well. Especially the way that it ended, uh, without giving away anything. Uh, I breathe the body is uh, another another big hit from Aftershock, uh, as far as I'm concerned. It's 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 well written, well drawn, and I think it's worth your time. Okay, the final book of this week is called Post Americana. I gotta tell you, Post Americana like really snuck under my radar. I bet a lot of people missed this book as well. Uh, I, I bought it a couple of weeks ago and I totally forgot about it. I was reading other books and I thought, well, I'll get to it eventually and just got pushed back and pushed back. And finally, I got a chance to read it. And I was impressed. Uh, Post Americana is by Steve Skros, S-K-R-O-C, or Skrose, and uh, uh, drawn by Dave Stewart. I gotta tell you, Dave Stewart's art really struck me when in this book. I mean, it kind of looks a little bit, am I, 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 I crazy? But it kind of reminded me of like uh, the heavy metal art of like uh, Mobius or or Corbin, uh, somewhere in that in, in that kind of a, a, a genre because it's a, it's a post-apocalyptic story. Uh, it, it takes place in the future, obviously, and there's an authoritarian government. Uh, the apocalypse has happened. Uh, America is, is, is no more. Uh, and it turns out the authoritarian government has gone underground to this place called the bubble. And they got this dictatorial president giving a speech, uh, going through this, this whole rigmarole, rigmarole. And a couple of guys are, are, are going to try to make an escape. And this has been a well-planned out escape because some other people are helping them just to get out, just to get the word out there as to what's going to be, what's going to be happening. Um, this, this, they clearly are not going to make it out themselves, but they want to make sure that these guys make it out. So these guys uh, create a diversion and in, uh, inside the, the bubble, which is like a fortress built inside of a mountain. It's like an entire city 
inside of a hollowed out mountain and they, they make their escape. Um, as they finally get away, the, 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 their, 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 their plane crashes. Uh, it crashes out in the, in the, the, the main part of the, the, the country, was left of the country. And all that's left are just, just basically like packs of either scavengers or cannibals. That's all you get is out there. You just, you know, this is just a wasteland full of these kind of people. Uh, so luckily, I guess for this guy, he's discovered first by the scavengers. So this, this one woman uh, who has uh, come to uh, not join the scavengers, but uh, she's 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 there. Obviously, um, everyone's like a, you know, on their own. And she's she's um she she met this guy called the flying fuck. The flying fuck is this guy. <laughs> this, this this guy with a jetpack, I guess. He somehow uh is has rigged himself to to be able to fly. And he is kind of it gives you it's kind of a road warrior vibe as far as that goes, you know, like this is one of the one of the leaders of the pack. Um and the flying fuck, uh attempts to capture um, these guys who, who uh, have escaped from the bubble and he really doesn't know where the hell they came from he thinks that you know that that's all there is is just um, scavengers and cannibals and who the hell are these guys where they come from whereas the woman whose name is Carolyn uh, she's really a badass and she recognizes what this guy is and where he came from and she attempts to make a kind of a deal with him and they form a partnership because she's got an agenda that she wants to fulfill too uh, and they take on the flying fuck and the rest of the uh the scavengers and they and they kind of they overpower these guys you know and they okay they said well carolyn i'll i'll do these things for you if you do these things for me and so forth i don't give too much of that away but they get kind of a tenuous partnership because uh, they really not some things happen with, with the guy um, he pretty much uh, is, is, is one. Of course, there's two guys who escape, and the most handsome guy survives, and uh, the other guy gets killed right away by the flying fuck and all his minions. So it's Carolyn and the, and the, the handsome guy uh, form this this partnership, and things happen at the end, and there's, it's uh, <laughs> as you might expect, the cannibals show up, and now the fun begins. So yeah, I mean, I, this this looks like it could be a fun book. It's it's got a lot of it's got, got some like I said, road warrior elements. It's got some uh, heavy metal type of uh, art and elements in it too. I, I think this could be kind of a sleeper. Uh, this is probably still out there, you know, at your local comic shop, and you can just probably pick it off the shelf if you want to check out the first issue. Issue number two comes out. I want to say um, next week or ver. I think, I think next week. Uh, by next week, I mean the very next um, comic book day, which is probably um, coming up this Wednesday. So, yeah. So, anyway, you can still get the number one if you want to catch up on that and see if you'd like to check out number two. So, yeah, that's uh, that's all for this week's uh, Indie Comics Reviews. Um, I liked all three of these books. If I had to pick my favorite one, I would probably say it's between... You know, it's, uh, I breathe the body probably I would say is uh, is more uh, got me more excited as far as what's going to happen next. But I really got kind of hopes for Abbott 1973 as well because that looks like it's going to be a good one. And Post Americana looks good too. So what the hell? I like all of them. <laughs> Go out and buy all three of them. These are all great books. So that's it. Um, don't forget to hit the, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and hit the notifications button so you know when I make my next video. So that's, that's all for this time, and I'll see you guys in my next video. Hey, don't forget to subscribe and leave a thumbs up.